We are live. Good evening, Ash. How are you? (laughs) I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, how are you doing? Oh, mate, it's been such a long time since we've been down the brig. It feels like I'm kind of sort of there, kind of. Yeah, kind of. There's rum and we're here, so that's pretty much (laughs) That's the important thing. (laughs) Cool, right. Well, we need to fluff just a little bit. We can see some viewers coming in already, but we need to give a few a few minutes before we kind of get started for a few people to arrive. But we'll, we'll flip the comments up. Um, how are you? Are you okay? Are you keeping busy? Are you doing things? Tell us about what lockdown life with the brig and projects and stuff, if there are any. Yeah, so busy might be a bit of a stretch. Um, we're doing we're doing what we can. So we've been doing our takeaway service again. Um, mostly we've just delivery at the moment just because it's easy and obviously we can't collect alcohol but you can have it delivered it's all very strange yeah. isn't it the rules and inconsistencies stuff. of the government they eh? and their message yeah but... exactly well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> brig staff yeah. reporting well done you got your see everyone's coming in they all start yeah. arriving and we've got a good, good number of viewers that's kind of cool um yeah. so for those tuning in i'm peter holland i remember to update my um little name tag on my uh on my on my i don't know what you call it my viewy bit so I'm the, I'm the <laughs> UK brand ambassador for Foursquare, <laughs> my, my viewy thingy. It's okay. been a long week. It's been a long lockdown so far. I'm not, I can't talk. Why me talk? I sound like Homer Simpson. It's getting a bit that way, isn't it, you know? <laughs> no, nothing to rum, Nothing to do with the rum. Yeah, well, we'll get some rums inside as we go. Um, for those tuning in, hoping to see Gail Seal, um, Gail will be with us at some point. She's currently driving across Barbados in probably some 30-degree sunshine. Um, just to make us all very jealous as we're really enjoying cold winter here in the UK. Um, but uh, hopefully she'll be with us fairly soon. We'll bring her in when she does. Um, do feel free to throw your questions in and see what people saying hello and everything. Make sure you ask your questions, ask as you go along. Um, but I think what we really should do, as the plan was, to drink some rum. Kind of feels like, <laughs> kind of feels like the rum clubs that we've enjoyed down at the brig previously, because I've been privileged to do what three four of them i think over the years yeah. down with you guys and it's always been fun i know kind of like this isn't really a substitute but i'm kind of hoping that people get involved the way they did online you know and, and paul joined us all the way from from scotland like because this guy just kind of can't get enough foursquare it seems he follows me around with foursquare yeah um, <laughs> that's not a bad thing <laughs> it's not really no and i see there's a whole lot of people tuning in that didn't buy the sets so you know it's kind of cool um we will um we'll we'll tell you i'm sure there'll be questions about redo tarp uh, please wait. We'll tell you all about that a bit later on. Um, we won't be tasting that one tonight, unfortunately. Just haven't got the stock into the UK of that one yet. <sighs> no, it's still stuck, do? isn't it, somewhere? Stuck in Rotterdam, actually. Yeah, sorry. Let me yeah. just wet, wet my throat. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you do what you got to do. <sighs> Do what I do. Yes, unfortunately, um, Brexit did did wonderful things for the the receipt of uh, of fine rum into the UK. <laughs> Damn <Yeah>. it. <laughs> That's why rum is stuck in in Europe somewhere, um, waiting to come in. Anyway, right? Should we start? Yeah, let's have do that. Your, have you got your set? Have Me. You got your set, Ash? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. They're lined oh, up in, oh, in the right. order that I've guessed they're going to appear in. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> right then. So I've got a few things I would like to say. Um, and it's, I'm hosting this rum club, so you know what? You're just going to have to sit there and listen to them. Um, so I'm going to share a few uh, a few bits of uh, simple bits of information because we always do this. I kind of like I try not to. Um, I, 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 I digress. I like to digress as well. I was doing a rum club on Monday morning at eight thirty with the Hobart Rum Club in Australia. So like eight thirty in the morning doing rum, like you know, and I'm still managed to get ranty and talking about rum even at eight thirty in the morning without any rum inside me. <laughs> Don't, you know, like you know, it didn't take long to get some rum inside me, but I like, still, we, we, there's some rum messages that I need to share with you all. So, um, give me two seconds to load that up. It's not death by PowerPoint. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, present it. That should come back there. So we have just wait for that horrible thing there to slide down. So, most important thing. Let me mouse over there. Boom. So we're here in some respects to celebrate the team uh, in Foursquare. And so we say Gail will be with us. So Gail's not in this picture because hopefully she'll be joining us very soon. So uh, this is the, uh, the, the the original founder in the black and white picture, original Leon Seal, um, who started the company back in 1926. Uh, and then on, on the top right, we are Richard Seal, who's the, 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 the current incumbent and sort of running the, the show, as it were. Um, I, I think his father actually hasn't technically retired yet, although um, we don't necessarily see him about the company. At, um, I think I think once you start, when you run a big company, it must be difficult to kind of let go. But um, by the way, Richard's sort of in charge of the day to day, and then you got like the, the team below, like blenders and warehouse and 
you know, the, all the all the kind of things, export all the important stuff that makes a company run. Um, so it's really kind of cool to see them and say, go all dial in with when you can. So simple question for you. What is rum? I'll answer the question. Don't worry about that. Um, rum is a spirit made from sugar cane, a juice crushed, uh, collected from crushed sugar cane or from molasses or possibly a combination of all. Um, but what is not rum, and I'm going to be like, you know, there's a lot of Spice Rum fans out there, but if it's been flavoured, it's not rum. That's a spirit drink. Um, so rum, in the sense of uh, the, the true sense of the word, is uh, is an authentic spirit, is uh, distilled, fermented and distilled from sugar cane or a byproduct of, uh, of like sugar production. Um, and there are some other basic ones, like it's not meant to be distilled over 96%, which is like the limit of commercial distillation anyway. Um, and it should be bottled here in the UK at a minimum 37 and a half, which is just some sort of hang up from like rules from ages ago, you know, like whatever. But like nothing really defines the world of rum, particularly none of the rules that like in the, in the simplest sense really sort of tell you much about rum. So that's kind of what we what we kind of do. For anyone who's done a rum club with me before, my, my advice always when it comes to rum club, uh, to, to like, if you want to understand rum, is you've just got to try all the rums, drink all the rum, try as many different expressions of rum as you can, and try and find out why you're why you're drinking them, what it is that makes them special, like what what is what is it made from, yeah, how is it distilled, where does it come, you know, the the the, the technicals about it, because that'll help you to really to understand what rum is. Rum is the most diverse category ever, ever without uh, without <laughs> doubt. Um, I mean, seriously, I mean, well, maybe Baiju could possibly be said to be pretty complex. I mean, like, you know, but, but that, I mean, I, I don't know enough about that to kind of be honest. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I've done this every rum club. I think without fail, every single rum club down in uh, down the brig, I've done this thing, a question of color. We're all going to make it. We're going to do it. We're going to do pinky promise. We're all going to pinky promise that we're going to not talk about rum. We're not going to classify rum by color. We're not going to talk about white rums or gold rums or dark rums because color is not a flavor. It's a really important thing to kind of get over. And so I'll do a little demo in a moment. But I, you know, it's a very it's a very easy thing to fall into, like especially when a rum is like see through. It's white, you know, or what else you call it. But a white rum such as Bacardi or a white rum such as Ray and Nephew are two very very different things in terms of taste. And like and and flavor and and just kind of experience in general, you know. But they both share the same color, so color doesn't really tell you what it is that you've got in your glass. However, if I was to say that it was a blend of pot and column distillates from Jamaica, then oh, hang on, then you might be thinking, and especially a, a couple of that with overproof, then you might be thinking, well, that's actually yeah, you have more of an expectation of what is in the glass. Or if I said it was a multi-column rum from from Puerto Rico, yeah, that might sort of shape your um uh, sort of you know, how you're going to look into this rum. So. Um, color is not a very good um, uh, guide to what is going to be in your glass. So the other part is, they, you know, wh where does gold stop being gold and when it starts becoming dark? You know, what, what's that kind of threshold on gold and dark? You know, do we, do we, have, we, have we got to go out and set a Pantone number or a round number to kind of define what the threshold is between gold and dark? So I'm, I'm going to like, I'm just going to do the one thing that I always love to do. And I'm going to bring, oh, it's Gail. Gail is, oh my God. Gail, you look. <laughs> I'll just bring you into the stream. Hello, Gail. I didn't see you there lurking in the... <laughs> you, you do look very safe. Shall we... <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello. Wow. Extra precautions. I'm going to... Oh, nervous. Bring, my nervous <laughs> bring my mask for me. I, I feel I need to... Uh, <laughs> I need to... Uh, to uh, help. Hey, how was your drive over? Wasn't too bad. It's a, a beautiful day here in Barbados. Oh, man. Yeah. It's all right. Well, we, we we don't mind being teased generally, but uh, you're in the um in the in the bar. Is that correct? I am in the Copper Still Bar. Oh, what a terrible place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Not jealous at all. Actually, being by myself, I feel like I don't really need all that protection. But walking yeah. over, I was like, I've got to be protected. Well, yeah, we have to be. Uh, we'll come back to that because I'd, I'd like to um, use the opportunity to uh, sort of chat about um four square and stuff but what i thought we'd do is we'll get the guys into some um rum to start with get some rum in their glasses so i was just going to run through the very basics um and so uh and you're gonna get i think this is the first time you've probably seen me do the old caramel trick but i'm gonna do it anyway um so imagine you have here i'm gonna put into my glass some very inexpensive supermarket grade white rum and i'm gonna ask you to mentally assign a value to it yeah, right over to the camera so she, you know what i'll do let's just bring this back over to bar a bit bigger there we go so there we go so mentally assign a value so this is like you know when we talk about um 
uh, lots of inexpensive rums use distillers caramel. Nothing wrong with caramel in itself, not when it's used for consistency or for, uh, you know, sort of um, consistency, I suppose, is the main part of it. But it changes. It's powerful stuff. So I've, I've just put some that E150A into a dropper. We talk about the power of what, what does a, a single drop of caramel do? Uh, donk, there we go. Just pop that down. Caramel is messy. Oh, my Lord, is it messy, this stuff. There we go. Look at that. So... We're taking that inexpensive caram uh, that inexpensive supermarket white rum and turned it into something that's actually quite attractive, you know, and you can see the allure of it. Now like my little girl's waving profit rolls in my face now, so that's just for added added emphasis. But what a little bit is not necessarily a problem, but what we can what we get, happens a lot in the rum world is when you kind of go a bit crazy with the caram. I'm not gonna say that famous botanical spice rum brand that has like a very, very 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 dark color i can promise you that when they get that sort of you know to be that dark it's not a thousand years old i can promise you it's just an excessively large amount of caramel so you know at, at the point so like you know this idea of gold and dark is you know color is a mutable thing it doesn't really change it i haven't changed the rum in the glass all i've done is i've changed the the, the color of the rum in the glass and so it doesn't really you know it's not meaningful so if we're not going to use color because we've all now pinky promised and we're not going to use color as um as our classifier what are we going to do Let's go back to the, put the slide back up on there. Um, what are we going to do instead? Well, we're going to use the Gargano classification, which is awesome. Um, and that's the a thing that we use at Foursquare Distillery. Um, I'll pull a bottle out. If you have any of the bottles, you'll see that just under the, the Foursquare names, particularly um, the, name of the bottle names, they have single blended rum. And that comes directly from the Gargano classification. Um, of which I've got a little copy here. It says the, the web link in the um, in the picture. Um, so nice and, and the uh, website. This is the, the kind of the clearest place to see it. In fact, I can. There is a little explanation of it. Let me. If I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to reshare. Oh, I love technology, don't you? Chrome tab. Like that. I think this is the one. Share that one. So this one, you see, there's a little bit of a um, story about it. So Luca's kind of history uh, uh, of how it all kind of came about. And it kind of makes sense. Luca Gargano is a fantastically passionate gentleman who is probably still talking live on the Whiskey Exchange at the moment because he was doing a hand plate um, tasting from 6.30. Probably still going. Nothing, there's nothing that stops Luca from talking about rum. Um, but he was the first gentleman to, to coin this sort of term talking about English rums or French rums or Spanish Latin rums, um, which was good 20 odd years ago, but doesn't really work these days. It's a, it's, it's a, a little bit weak. It's a kind of a nice overview-ish sort of thing. But the Gargano classification, there's a lot more information there. So you can kind of go and look that up in your own time. Let's stop that and go back to my slide. Uh, share screen. Tab on bus like there. Don't. Make it look so, easy, Pete. Well done. Well, it's not, it's not my first rodeo. That's <laughs> I, have, I have cocked things up beautifully in the past, though. Um, so you see this lovely um, spec. So this is kind of like you go, you'll go. you get people looking at this and going, like, what on earth does this mean? What it's really trying to put at the heart of it, it's trying to say, well, if you can't use color as a, as a classifier, what can you use? And there are, some, there, are some, there are some alternatives out there, and the folks out there kind of have come up with ones that almost become like a list of like 25 different categories or sort of descriptors. And that's not so much a classification, which should be a means of comparing, as a... Um, well, there's a list, really. It's just it's like a yeah, it's a tick box list of all the things that that rum is, and that doesn't really help you to compare it against something else. It just identifies it. Um, but basically, pot still uh, is like the oldest, the pure single rum as it's described there. Pot still is the oldest method of distillation. It's like the most authentic, uh, and arguably the the most charismatic kind of way of, of, of most characterful way of distilling spirit. And it's sort of the other end of the scale, which is kind of represents the vast majority of rum on the on the market is, is just rum or modern rum as you call it um, and that's invariably most inexpensive brands are, are, are based on the most efficient method of distillation um, and of course here in the UK and well I guess all around the world we always like things to be cheap and you kind of when you go cheap well you pay for what you get really you know and so um, highly rectified spirit from a multi-column system really doesn't have a lot of flavor left in it but it's a style that is very, very popular for all those reasons we said, and, and different parts of the world um, have this, that's all they know, or, you know, that's kind of culturally, that's what they ex expect. So it depends where you are. I learned very quickly by marrying into a West Indian family that, um, that 
everyone from uh, everyone from their own island has their idea that their rum is definitely the best. There's, mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no question. There's no like kind of argument about it. It's like you know, rum from St Vincent is far better than anything else. You know, and I've had many Vincentians tell me that, uh, even to this day, kind of thing. You know, everyone keeps saying that. So it's kind of like how you make it is is um, is is important to understand the character of the rum. But it's not to say that this classification is an order of preference or an order of quality. It's just a way of helping to understand how the rum works. So all the rums um, from Fortescue Squilly uh, Distillery, blah, blah, getting twisted in there, um, with the exception of some of the ones that you get actually in for uh, in Barbados, are single blended rums. So they're a blend of pot and column distillates. So what does that mean in reality? That's the. I was going to say, I, there's no way you can stand to get a decent photo of the pot still. But of course, now you guys are installing another pot still at uh, Foursquare. So uh, maybe that one will be positioned slightly better so I can actually get a, a proper side on photo, Gail. Is that nope. true? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been studying that myself all week as it's been going in. I, I went down to take a look at it, and it's literally in that space where you used to stand to take this picture. There is, ah. it's right there in front of the. Um, what the old boiler and right. we're actually trying to figure out how we're going to get people in to see it on a tour now because that's where we usually stand <laughs> <laughs> right so for those who don't know so i i the last time i was in barbados i uh was oof, three years ago and uh, and so to take the photo of the pot still that you see there involved me laying on the floor with my iphone um and the, the the beautiful sunshine in the background streaming through the window did kind of make it kind of sort of it was kind of kind of cool but like i just about you can just about get the top of the the, the line arm in and you can see the, the double retort set up but the, the the nice picture that's on the side there was taken from the uh the, the velier bottling um that, that the guys released and that's a nice artist's rendition of the uh, of the setup and it tells you all you need to know so the at four square they have this beautiful um double retort pot still set up i would say it's um it's as the design as you could ever have hope to have but with modern enhancements and i think the new one that's being installed literally as we speak uh is going to be one of the most advanced ones ever is that true oh, yeah. also 100%. i mean I, richard seal is not the kind of person given over to exaggeration but when he wrote on on his one of his recent facebook posts that uh like he's pretty excited about it you go like well well if richard's excited well <laughs> we, we yes. all need to be pretty excited about this <laughs> So this is this is the the beating heart of the distillery. This is where they kind of that that, that sort of heavier, more charismatic rum, uh, the artisanal kind of rum is made. And then to complement that, again, there's nowhere easy. You can stand to take a photo of the entire column setup, is there? You have to again lay on the floor and <laughs> take a photo up the up the column yeah. tower. Um, <laughs> and so they've got a, a three column setup, but it, when they're making rum, it only runs in the two column John Dorn mode. And uh, and I've been right up to the top of that column steel tower. And even in the, 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 the gentle breeze in Barbados, that it moves more distressingly than, <laughs> than I enjoyed. In the and it's a little warm up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I will say that Richard Seal um, sculled up, that, up and down that ladder far faster than I expected any human being to do. So I, can't, <laughs> so I guess that's, that comes from practice, I guess. <laughs> it's like his own personal playground. I mean, he's grown. He's, he's, he's been there since the beginning. So climbing up and down that is just the normal daily he's thing for him. Familiar. I, was quite, I, was, I'm, I wasn't saying that I was terrified, but I was a little bit weary should i say if i was climbing climbing down it's like I, I guess it was my fault i was in flip-flops that was a, a, a schoolboy error on my part but, um, but you know. <laughs> so they're the distillate so yeah so the, the column still um is also uh technologically um uh, a little more advanced than some so it runs under a vacuum which means it's a little more energy efficient and you don't have to cook the wine that's been sort of passed through it but um all the rums you're going to have tonight are made from molasses uh, and they are all a blend of pot and column distillates in varying proportions. I can't tell you the proportions. I've known Richard for a very long time. He doesn't tell me. There are secrets that he that keeps them to himself. If you he told you, you'd have to kill you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't. I, I don't need to be. I don't need to ask. I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to stay alive. It's fine. So, um, and what we up to now? So they have what? What's it? Four warehouses you have of of yeah. casks. We're like forty five thousand casks. I, I heard Richard say the other day. It's yeah. a lot of rum. And uh, and sitting there, just sitting there, getting older, gradually improving with time and becoming more exciting. Um, I, so. I don't know if you knew this, but we literally just installed solar panels on all, all the warehouses. That's fantastic, and that that's uh, to be fair. I was going to ask you about the sustainable kind of side of things because this is one of the one of the aspects of a lot of production these days where people, um, um, you know. 
companies will do something positive and then kind of talk about it in a big way because it's a nice kind of thing to talk about from a marketing point of view. You guys installed all your solar panels, which I think what you can effectively cover the power requirements for the site. Is that, that correct? Yes. And you haven't, I, I'm not even sure there was, was there one Facebook post on a personal page? <laughs> They're literally the gardener just passed by with the big blower and I'm like, seriously, dude? Seriously? <laughs> Well, you are on a you're on a, a heritage park. He's got to keep hold of it. He's got to keep it in, in good trim, and he so. Um, so yeah. So it's the, um, so um, whenever we do, Richard talks about rum, he does make it sound disarmingly simple, um, uh, and I suppose in some respects it is. But it but don't let him don't let that fool you. The the, the management of um, of stock and distillation and everything else is um, there's far more attention paid to detail than uh, than perhaps he likes to, to disingenuously say. You know. Um, just we're not um, not going to try the entire range, but I just want to make mention of the other bottlings that are available uh, here in the UK. This is UK specific for anyone else dialing in from outside. Uh, we have the 40% Dawley's three. Um, for those with the sharp eyes, you see in the red text, it's a 47% Dawley's three year old. Both of these are um, uh, say minimum three years old and color filtered to sort of bring them back to that nearly water white, a little pale gold about them. Um, we've got Dawley's five, which is uh, a, a all of these rums are a staple. I have to say that I've got a, a soft spot for the 47% three-year-old. Um, I, I, I just can't. I, it's my exclusive now. Well, I'm, I'm kind of want that kind of rum. Um, we've also got the liqueurs, of which uh, John D. Taylor's Velvet for Learning is kind of worth a, a um, worth a seminar on its own, really. And, and we did one last year with Richard, where he waxed the lyrical for an hour and a half about for learning, the history thereof. And um, and to be fair, I might share that link because I've got it. I've got it saved up to our YouTube page. So anyone who wants to kind of come back to that can do. Foursquare Spiced seems to be going through even more of a renaissance at the moment from all I hear from the importers. The, um, the uptake on spice rum is ridiculous and Foursquare Spice is selling hugely. But if you've not come across it before, Charisma, my tip to you guys, Charisma. Oh, my so God. Good. <laughs> so good. He's got oh. pancakes. Oh, it's, a, it's so versatile. <laughs> a rum cream liqueur. Very simple, rum, cream, coffee, and what's the other one? But like, just simple, but oh my God. <laughs> it's, the, the trouble is once you break the seal on it, it kind of like, it, it has a habit of emptying, the, the bottle just sort of empties itself in double quick time. Um, yeah, so. it happens over yeah. here too. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> Game for sharing a bottle of charisma is it's terrifying. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't say it's just seasonal. I was making a, 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 a four-square Alexander the other day where I was taking a inspiration on the, the classic Alexander cocktail uh, oh, and I've been eating awesome. part of, of charisma four-square spice because actually, the, again, the spices are really good. In both four-square spice and charisma are both effectively really quite dry. I mean, four-square spice is no sugar added to it. Um, so it still make, it makes a very good cocktail ingredient. Charisma is pretty dry for as far as cream liqueurs mm. go. And then um, uh, uh, creme, uh, creme de cacao. So equal measures of that, shaken with ice. And, uh, and uh, uh, well, I, I do with an uh, egg white as well. Uh, oh, my God. <sighs> Far too drinkable. Anyway, we're not here to talk about my, my drinking habits. We're here to talk about rums. <laughs> should, we, should, we get a, should we get a rum in our glasses? <laughs> Everyone's going like, oh, thank God for that. Peter, there's the boss actually working. There's the boss. Oh, my God. Can, can we, let's, I don't know how we can make you bigger on the screen. Can make you bigger. Oh. He's gone now. Oh. <laughs> he, li he, li he literally <laughs> just walked by. It's, it's nice to do in something. Well done, him. Uh, hopefully making making more excellent rum for us. All right, I'm going to pour myself a rum because it is the end of the day here. I know for Miguel, it's like you're only halfway through the day, really, aren't you? So you got. But for us, it's it's evening time, and so now we're winding into our bedtime kind of thing. So, um, I'm, I'm just heading into a photo shoot here at the Copper Still Bar. Superb. Uh, what's that pull me? It's not just four square, a few different ones. Last ones, okay. Oh. Yeah, there's a couple of questions there, Pete. Don't you want to get a rum in our glass and we have a little, little bit there? <laughs> exactly. Cool. Right. So, um, uh, oh, anyone, uh, best place to order these? Well, I would say actually, in terms of getting hold of them, the best thing you can do is to ask at your local specialist um, spirits retailer because that helps the brand. You know, if you're going in there and asking for these rums by name, it, it encourages them to go out. If you are in the Falmouth area, of course, you've got Constantine stores. 
which is something of a legend in its own lifetime. Oh, really? um, and they stopped pretty much everything, I think. And I'm sure they'll be taking, they took, they took the ton. Yeah, there wasn't lots of it, but there wasn't lots of it for everyone. But uh, so I've taken all the latest releases. Um, but if you can't get into any of your local specialists, then online with a whiskey exchange or master and malt or any of those kind of um, uh, retailers. So, um, Look around. Don't take any risks during lockdown, obviously. But if you can support your local retail, so much the better. So, um, Dawley's Exo. I'm not saying this just because um, Gail's on there. I've been. I'll say this ever since I've been. Uh, I, I've been a fan of the brand for what ten years, long before I started working uh, for the brand um, in a part-time capacity. I should say, it's not a full-time job. But um, I Dawley's Exo has been an absolute favour of mine forever, and I've used it um, as that um, kind of. If you've never tried a rum before, what rum can you suggest to kind of get people into rum. So Dawley's XO has always been my my starting point for a couple of reasons. One is it's got like, it, it drinks very easily, but it's got a lovely complexity about it. And the complexity comes from this dual maturation. It's not a finish, it's a dual maturation. Um, Ex-bourbon cast followed by um, a few more years in uh, Oloroso Sherry. But it's not ridiculously expensive and it's pretty versatile. Neat, over ice, simple mixer, cocktail, the Gale Seal Daiquiri, of which uh, I feel we, we should have been. <laughs> I should uh, I'll have to. Pauline, uh, Gale Seal Daiquiris, please, for later on. Um, <laughs> <that'd> <laughs> <be> <laughs> <so>. <laughs> she's, she's out watching from in the kitchen, and Rebecca's on the iPad with her uh, headphones on, so hopefully she'll stay quiet. Um, so if you've got this one, um, please do take it out. I don't give tasting notes, uh, that's entirely up to you guys. Um, but um, for me, there's um, uh, a lovely fruit about this, and that, that that's that sherry cask kind of brings that over. That's so good, that one. Also say, because I don't know whether you've um, had a uh, had a chance to try it at 43. Last year, um, Dawley's XO went from 40%, which is the, the, the ABV it's been at for, for such a long time. Um, I mean, this is like, uh, Dawley's XO has been out for ages. I mean, we only found out recently Um one of, the, one of the projects I've had during lockdown, here I, go, I digress again. Um, one of the projects I had was to sort of start to write a bit of a, a brand manual for, um, because there isn't one. Just saying for the family members, there's not even a website for Foursquare. I've had people, you know, honestly, weekly I get people saying like, well, I can't find the Foursquare website. I'm like, <laughs> there isn't one. <laughs> <laughs> we've, never, we've never had one. We're, we put yeah. everything back into making rum and making the distillery better. So for us, it's better to put money into putting in a new pot still than it Definitely. is to building a website because with the internet you've got facebook instagram twitter between the three of those richard and i run all of that and we can still feel like we we can get close to grassroots and chat with everybody but for us putting money into a website is just kind of a waste <laughs> i love sorry. this it's the idea of marketing but we have this thing where i kind of like so we, we I'm, I'm using the brand manual to collect up and gather all the information that kind of comes out bit by bit you know i love the i love it when live streams with gail and richard go on because you get these little factoids get released and you go oh brilliant i'm gonna write that one down That's, i didn't know that so it turns out this was uh, richard seals like his first sort of project his first rum that he he created Oh, that's pretty awesome because all the other ones would have been in existence before he joined yep. the company. Didn't really talk about the history. I think I'll leave that to you in a moment. You can you can kind of go through that one while we're, while we're, while we're chatting. But um, but dual is XO. So it went from forty and it's just recently stepped up to forty three, which is the typical Barbados strength, isn't it? All the rums you see in Barbados tend to be at that, which is what seventy old English proof, I think. So there is a yep. there is a reason for it. But um, but for me, it's just like it's now even more drinkable than it was beforehand. Um, so it, it represents good value for money. You get a lot of bang for your buck, and this is really still the flagship rum. I think I don't know how it sells, like how, it, how the volume sales of it compete against the other ones, but I think this is absolutely delish. We have got there was a question there. What sort of cost is involved in the brand, in the new setup? <laughs> the cost of a force, the, the, the cost of the new pot still. I think that's a bit. I think that's a bit secret, isn't it? We're sharing. Yeah, the cost the, of those pool. questions we don't answer. Um, it was. It's worth the investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah rum is something i think this is what we're going to kind of get a sense for that rum is a long-term game you know this is not something you're doing to get your money back in 12 months this is 25 years plus ultimately it's a long long long-term game and you know what and and i kind of like when i first started when i was when i was just like a rum blogger because that's my background rum blogger before i started turn full-time in rum um, you know, I'll be like pestering Richard. So when's Dawley's 12 coming to the UK? When, when's it coming out? When's it coming out? We need it here now. And he'd be like, and I can see he's, he's, he's roll his eyes. He's asked this question like millions of times, you know, and now it's like, for me, you know, we, we arrive at like another rum seems to turn up before I've even, you know, before I realize, you know, it's like there's a new release coming out. It's like the, 
maybe it's just that I'm getting old. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the world doesn't seem to move fast. But like you have this idea that, that actually you, you're laying down rum now. You're not laying it down for immediate consumption. You're laying it down for 12, 14 or more years, you know. Yeah. And to get a 16-year-old year rum, you've got to have not used it all that time. So you've got to lay down all the stuff to make the three-year-old and the five and the XO and the 12 and everything else in between and still have some left over. Like, yeah, oh I mean, when you lay down something that you're planning to leave that long, you lose a lot to the angel share. So you kind of have to plan. You can't just say, hey, I want you know 10 barrels of 16-year-old rum. You'd be like, okay, I've got to put you know 20-something barrels away. And then the band of 16 years, I will have what 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 I need. That's fascinating. It is. It is um, I, you've got to... Uh, you've got to wonder, uh, really, about the uh, the sense of it. <laughs> you put some down, and you just lose so much of it over you know, that duration. But of course, without the angel share, excuse me, you wouldn't get the maturation. You wouldn't get that interaction with the barrel, and you just it, it wouldn't be the same thing, would it? You know, you get you, you exactly. get these books trying to cheat time, but it just doesn't work. You know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> as Richard says, in due course, in due course. as well. <laughs> right, I'm going to move on to um, pour myself a twelve. Uh, so please feel free to, uh, to to join. So for everyone out there, got, they've all got a, a, a top. We've got the XO12, 14, RL Seals 10, the Tont, and 2008 Gale. That's what they've uh, the, the people have in their tasting packs. Um, okay. I'm not sure you'll be uh, or you'll be drinking or not. Uh, so you've got work today. I've, 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 I've got a photo shoot to do. There's no drinking for me till afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would make me want to drink. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, the whole thing is um kind of like I, I like doing these things in the evening i like doing it from home because it means i haven't even got to get myself home afterwards it's like that's it <laughs> <laughs> feet up in front Sorry. of the telly brilliant the, the bar the bar just got a little busy so i was like i gotta turn the radio down a little bit <laughs> Fair play. um dolly's xo that we just had mouth. is the only dolly's xo is the only one without an implicit age statement um, in the sort of the export range, everything else has an age statement, and so if you see twelve year old, it means this is minimum twelve years old, um, and so uh, a little different in its construction. So, whereas Dawley's XO was a, a dual maturation, yes. five years of next bourbon, followed by that all those casts that were laid down the five year old, you've added all together, recask it into Oloroso sherry cask, and then leave it for a further period of time. This is actually a cast blend. And this, you know what? When I first when I first heard about this, I didn't give this credit uh, for its its brilliance in the, the possibilities and the permutations. But the longer I spend working with the brand, the more releases I try, the more you see the genius in the in the solution. And I'm gonna, I really I keep I keep meaning to do this properly, but like I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can draw a picture. Actually, I can't. That <laughs> maybe helps to explain. That's quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna... I need a thing. I need a thing. I need a thing. Yeah. I know this is not it's, not. it's not a great view of my belly, but you know, hey, you get, pain. You, get the, you get the belly shot for free. So remember at the beginning, I said that all of the rums that we're having tonight were made from molasses, but all of them are a pot column blend. Well, they're also then when you go. So if I if I draw, I, I'm looking for the perfect visualization on this, and I haven't got it. For those that can see it, a square. Look at that. That's the rum. I'm going to put a line across the top. Yeah. Top portion could be the pot still, and the bottom portion could be the column still. Now that line could be moved up and down to vary the proportion. In the case of a cast blend, it's even more fun. Let me just take this off. Let me just, how do I take it? Where's my mask on? Make it a bit bigger. In the case of a cast blend, the vertical line could be the difference between the X-Burb and the X-Madeira. So not only are you taking the vertical, the horizontal line up and down, you can take the, that line that way and that way. So you can vary the proportions of all these things. And you think about the permutations and possibilities within that, which is why I'm saying this now, because when you see on a lot of these other ones, you go like, oh, so it's a pot con, I mean, it's an a ex-bourbon, ex-Madeira blend. I don't want anyone to think that just because it's that blend, that it's the same, it's going to taste the same. It really isn't. There's like... Moreover than just the, the, the variation in pot column, you've got the variation between the cast, the amount of cast proportion, you've got the age, and you've got the presentation strength. So as they get higher as well, that changes the way the flavor delivers. So I say this because I, like, I like the really diagram, Peter. That's perfect. 
<laughs> the trouble is, if I publish this, people are going to go, oh, oh, so what you're saying, it's exactly this proportion. And I can't do that. So, you know, I've got to, it's got to be informal and on the fly. But it's kind of like I want people to realize, and there's a method in my madness, I want people to realize that they're all different so they buy a bottle of everything. Don't just choose I like one. And buy. I want you to buy the, the whole range for your collection. That's what I want. Safe in the knowledge, they will taste different. Every single day we get somebody saying, oh, this is the same finish as this one. And we're like, no, it's not a finish. It's a maturation. And we're like, okay, it's the same maturation. Is it the same rum? And you're like, no, it's not the same <laughs> rum. I, I have right. I, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind admitting that the idea was like as things moving through time with a brand, you think, well, it's gonna, yeah, there's gonna be a degree of the same, but there really isn't so far. I mean, the amount of different rums. I mean, I can't remember when I when I started working with a brand. We just released in Bandel Cask in 2004. They were the ones that were, were that had been released. And there's been a lot of releases since then, obviously, and nothing, not, not one release tastes the same as another. All the vintages, the 04, the five, seven, eight all quite different in, in profile similarity there's a house style but the profile changes a little bit so i so i, I I'm, I'm using this opportunity to say that if there's something about one of the ones that you don't particularly dig that's okay it's fine better to have something that provokes the reaction than yeah i think i think richard would be like if someone doesn't care enough about his about his rum to express an opinion i think he'd be more disappointed by that than someone saying like i love this or actually no i don't care for it you know expressing an opinion is is far more memorable than yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he loves to see people discussing like you know 2006 is my favorite. I like 2004. I like the detente. I like the red tab. I like. He really enjoys knowing that there's something for everybody. That it's not all the same. It's important, isn't it? It's important. It is. Imp it's important to recognize. You know, I mean, for me, I don't. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I don't. I, I don't think there's any weak links. I I have to say that I didn't like Dawley's Twelve as much at forty percent. I found it probably the weakest one now it's at 43 it's probably actually moved to the other end of the scale it's like like the, the, the way it delivers is like oh no this just really works for me so something as simple as three degrees of of, of proof like it makes a, it make a difference we, I mean, we had a, a bartender once come on a visit to foursquare from abroad and got a, got a little cocky and was like I don't believe they're all different. You know, you've got all of them here. Can I try them all? And I was like, it's a cheeky way to try all of them, but fair <laughs> enough. And um, he tried them all and admitted that not one of them tasted exactly like the okay. others and they were all completely different. And then he had to have dinner with Richard and another good friend of ours. And poor guy was shit faced. <laughs> Go home and have a nap. He didn't say much during dinner, unfortunately, but he did taste them all and did say not one was the same. What a terrible! That's that's just a terrible. Uh, uh, yeah, well, well, to be honest, you know what? I, I, I'm going to use that next time I'm over. I don't believe yeah, you. I'm not going to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that 2006, the four square 2006, is definitely the same as ROC Hills 10. I mean, you have to pull it all out to prove it. All right. <laughs> So this one, so we, what we haven't made mention so far of it is that uh, the, each of the different Dawleys ranges have a different macaw on the front. We do get people saying, oh, they're the parrots. I kind of do, I, on behalf of the company, I twitch just a little bit. They are specifically macaws. Um, was it the Hyacinth macaw on the, on the first one? I'm getting, I feel like I'm being tested now, actually. I think, in fact, is this not, all the years I've been working, I think this is the first one you've actually been with me all the way through my through a, a, a presentation, I think. Well, at least oh, on no, screen, I've, anyway. I've, I've, on, for, on a Zoom one, yes. <laughs> but in real life, I've been to many of your presentations. <laughs> Fair play. Uh, the Sphinx Macaw, uh, Sphinx Macaw is the uh, the one on the twelve, which has that um, uh, a very rare species when the the brand was uh, that skew was released. I think it's extinct, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not. <laughs> very very rare we're not saying that there's a correlation uh, between um four square choosing the, the macaw and, and and extinction level events but you know um we, we have a lot more hope for the what the blue throated on the on the dual is 14 so worth mentioning also dual is 14 and i guess this is gonna i mean uh, sorry the the dual is martin dawley we'll kind of talk a bit back when we maybe i can impress on gail to give us a little bit of the family history and uh, and things but martin dawley was a a famous rum merchant of old and there's a lot more prestige to the to the, to the name of martin dawley um as far as barbados is concerned and so as soon as the opportunity to sort of use the name on the brands was there we took it and ran with it so i uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that maybe a little bit later if that's okay 
So Dawn is 12, um, 43%. So that way also went up from 40 to 43. Uh, and that's that ex um, uh, ex Madeira blend. So this is why. So um, initially, when we first started working for Richard as well, I it doesn't say anywhere on the Dawn is 12 that it's a Madeira, a Madeira's part of it. And I started, I just started just talking about it because Richard told me. And then Richard's going like, how do these people know that it's got Madeira cask in it? And I'm sort of like sort of shuffling and looking at my feet and trying not to say anything. Like, uh, I, I kind of told them. <laughs> I think it's important. I think it's important to understand why Dawley's XL and Dawley's 12 taste quite different. Mm. Right. Talking about Dawley's 14. Should we move on to that one? Yeah, let's do that. Love that one. Now, we do jump up a little bit here. I haven't done the whole kind of... Um, all the time that we're in lockdown, I, I don't do that thing where you go like, well, you know, um, yeah, it's, if this is your first alcohol of the day, you know, then you should do this. I mean, like, uh, like after eight o'clock, I mean, after sorry, after seven thirty on a, <laughs> during lockdown, if, if you haven't had any alcohol by now, <laughs> oh, there anyone's trying hard enough, quite frankly. <laughs> but this one, you do need to be warned of forty eight percent. So we have a, a, a nice step up in ABV. Um, and you see why I took the time to sort of talk about the notion of the variation or the potential for variation in the, in the blends um, is that um, you look at this. So, oh, ah, God, didn't correct it from last time. It's not a 12 year old. Bit, so you know what doing. Right, stop. Right, I'm going to, so this is a brand training one. Right, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Yeah, whoop, get back, 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 back. Okay. I need to correct this now. So it's on the drive. If I don't correct it, I'm just going mad. There we go. Right. There we go. Back to it. <laughs> and uh, I've got to go back to the share screen now. Like, oh my gosh, it's so complicated. <laughs> Honestly, the amount of times I go like, I'll change that after I finish the. Um, oh, that's okay. Gal's just the thing, the thing. and I never do. Right, here we go back to that presently. Any typos? Feel free to tell me. You win smart ass um, points. Um, so yeah, it's all these fourteen. The reason I say take to tell people about the notion of blend because you might think that Dawley's fourteen is just going to be a two-year-old, slightly higher proof version of Dawley's twelve. And it, quite frankly, is nowhere near it. Um, very, very different animal, uh, McCaw, should I say, in the in in a glass. <laughs> So if anyone's got any favorites, feel free to, to express, you know, any personal preferences as you go along. Um, it, tell us if you like them, tell us if you don't like them. Please, you know, you've got um, your Gail here. Uh, any questions you want to ask, please do shout out. 48%, why go to 48%? So this is something that um, there's a lot of history about this. Richard Till does talk about this in a far more eloquent way than, than I can because I'm, I am a, uh, I'm not a, a, a rum maker. Um, there are and there are other videos which you can go back and watch as subsequently. I'll share the, the link to our YouTube page. Afterwards. But um, basically, when you make a rum, you distill a rum. It's reduced. Yeah, you, you uh, at Foursquare they pre-blend uh, a little bit of pot still with a column and a little bit of column with a pot still. Um, pre-blending, put it into a barrel and they put it in at sixty-five percent ABV, which is pretty high. But when you distill a rum, so like when it's coming off the column still, it's coming off at what, 94 or something like that, percent ABV. And the pot still is going to be up in the 80s, 85, something like that. Um, and so these are high proof spirits, but they are diluted a little bit before they go into the cask. Um, and then they're left and they mature. And that about, the ABV of the cask is a balance of um, economics, which I think, as well as um, uh, a nice bit in the extraction and all, all kinds of things. There's all, all sorts of parameters going on in maturation. It really is non... It, it sounds like you just stick it in a barrel and, and leave it. It's a lot more complicated than that. Um, but when you take it out of there and then you reduce it to bottle strength, the action of adding water to bring it down to bottle strength is where you actually kind of can undo all the good work you've done through maturation. Um, you, you, you're adding water, breaks up the chemistry of the alcohol and it, and, and it affects the flavor. And so you're diluting. So the higher proof you can leave it, actually the more flavorsome it is, the more intense the, the flavor and the delivery. So in this case, Dawley's 14 was, was pitched out at 48%. And it's always a, um, a, a bit of a balance. For those that can see, we are actually kind of dropped in through from, uh, from the coffee field bar through uh, the, it feels like we're kind of there. I know, it's sort. great, isn't it? It's like a little tour. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. Let's just put that back to. Oh, I don't know whether I can actually just. There we go, and we're stepping into the aging house through the back door. There, cool. cool that. <laughs> so cool. This is this uh, actually not the, it's not the aging warehouse. This is the way station where the barrels. Way station. Out, 
and right. refill and uh, empty them. Cool, cool, cool. It did look that trick of the light. There was like a kind of a, a lot of bright light. It looked like there was a, the, the, that stack of barrels was leaning over, but it was just light shining on them, sort of hiding them. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go. It's been so long since I've been there. I just wish I was there. I really do. Oh man. A lot of barrels. <laughs> 40, well, I said the, the the main warehouse further out. Again, it's 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 surprising the um the whole. Lots of things have been changed since I've been there last. The the the, the vat in the, the big large tanks and things, all kinds of stuff. Very very cool. Thank you, Andrew. We were, it's nice to have somebody out of the uh, distillery that um, can actually uh, uh, can, can give us a little show around. It is really cool. It's it's just as cool for me. I, I, I'm not getting, I never get tired of looking around and see what's going on. Every time I go to visit, there's always something different going on, and it's not like I go regularly. So I, I really don't. <laughs> um, trying to think. We we put a new floor in. Have you? Oh, of course, with the fermentation there. Is that the one you mean? No, the whole the whole of the distillery. So, and we changed the CO2 uh, plant. Super. Love it. These guys are like, I'm, I'm the, I'm my, my background um, is, uh, is engineering. And so whenever I walk into a, a, a manufacturing facility, if, it, if you walk into it for the first time and it's a dirty shithole, then either the people inside are absolute geniuses or they're a bit slapdash in their whole production approach. And I tend to sort of go with the, the, with the latter. When I first visited Foursquare, I thought, I thought, well, I'm sure they haven't cleaned up on my behalf because I was just kind of a blogger at that point. <laughs> but it is just how it is. The facility is always spick and span. And you know what? And that's, you, you, you know, I think that just that mindset of, of quality just kind of runs down all the way through it. So this is the brand new pot still that you'll see in there. Very, very cool. Look how, look how high it is. You're trying to, um, oh, God, what's the... Glen Morangi, you're trying to out Glen Morangi, I think, aren't you, with the, the height of your height of the next. So that's going to produce, that's straight away, I'm thinking that's going to be, that's two pot stills that are going to produce different marks based on their geometry. Yes. Very cool. So as you can see, it's going to be very difficult to photograph this one too. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of laying on the floor, looking up into the heavens, isn't there, on this one? <laughs> Wonderful. I don't think I can. No, and then make... we have another small fermentation tank. Oh, here we go. Look. Didn't realize I could do that. I'd have done that earlier if I'd known. <laughs> All the fermentation tank. Because also the other thing is there was cane crushing going on, I think, when I, when I was last over. But, of course, you guys have had a yes. few more years at it now. And so the fermentation relating to We've cane crushing... a little bit different. more. I'm just gonna... I'll, I'll, take, I'll take you out there. Please do. For those that have got, still got any Dawley's 14 in your glass, this is a perfect opportunity, to obviously, to take your time and sip and, uh, and enjoy. Because um, this is uh, it's pretty awesome. I feel like I want to tip and turn my head on the side to look as we go through. <laughs> More tanks. Wow. Investment. There was something. There was a question of pre, on a previous one where, um, in lots of cases, the age marks aren't. You know, I mean, in theory, the twelve-year-old or the fourteen could have older rum within it, but it's not really the style for square. When they when they've got their twelve-year-old, it's taken out and put into stainless, sort of tanked effectively, so it so you can build up a stock to make make the blends so, and things. So you need so a lot this of storage. This is the new sugarcane juice and syrup area. Cool. And the crushing's done outside. Are you are you into crushing season yet? No, uh, end of February. And so this is our new cane crusher. It is very cool. We're kind of anxiously awaiting the, the opportunity to try it because um, I mean, Richard did say that Probitas, so that's the, the Veritas equivalent in the US market, uh, for those who don't know, the last batch of Probitas had some cane juice rum in it, which I think is pretty exciting. Yes. So I understand it's coming to Veritas as well. So it's something we will need to keep an eye out for. I didn't really mention Veritas in this one. I will, we make a verbal mention of it. We'll only talk about that um, as we go on as well. Very cool. I like I like the mask. This does not suck mask. Yeah, oh, I forgot your, about that. <laughs> this is your trademark. 
<laughs> anyone quite, anyone quite who um, doesn't know Gail, you need to follow Gail on. Uh, under normal circumstances, Gail is, is quite a global traveler, and um, you never know which, which, uh, quite which um, airport she's going to pop up in next. But uh... and, and cool. that's the end of my little tour of the facility. I had to go and uh, grab my glasses because I broke my glasses, so I had to grab oh. my car. But I thought it was a perfect opportunity to take you guys on a little impromptu oh, tour. Perfect. Thank you very much. It's, Thank you it's so much. Always Sarah. welcome. Amazing. Always welcome. Very cool. Right. So we're going to uh, get back to rum tasting. No, well, that's. I was hoping you were going to do it, but I was kind of worried about this idea of kind of the signal and everything. You know, signal strength and the ability to do it. But uh, well, um, there is also a. We're, there's, we're, you'll have to, you'll have to get your uncle back out to um, bring his 3D scanning um, tech with him. You know, and 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 do a uh, do an updated one with the new equipment in. Yes. So I send people on that little link. There's a little 3D. There's a link where you can go and sort of see the, the distillery in 3D, but it's a, a couple of years old now. So 48% for those that are um, sipping on this one. I kind of, um, uh, so from, to put a bit of context in it, I find that the that, that, that extra ABV delivers quite a lot of flavor, but I actually find this one a little warmer in the mouth than some of the ones that are a higher ABV. So if you're kind of, that, the way that a rum comes onto the palate is obviously very personal. So what you taste is, is personal to you. Um, but it's also there's lots of sort of factors in 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 the way that it the way that you experience it, and so that that heat, the little tingle of alcohol that you get on your palate, that's perfectly normal. You know, you are drinking an alcohol, and your body knows that alcohol is actually a poison, uh, and it tries to um, you know it, it, it sort of initially will recoil against it, but you have to fight past it, and uh, and and enjoy the enjoy the rum. Cool. And we've had a quick question there, Pete. Um, mm -hmm. Just someone saying, what's the difference between cast strength and overproof? really just a number um uh, overproof uh is i mean overproof goes back goes back quite a way actually um back to before you had any kind of measurement equipment um and so it was proof of alcohol um and so the, the, the way of testing it really was literally trying to set like the gunpowder because um that, that's why it was kind of important you know um so english proof is that, that kind of thing and so like overproof is it means it's 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 strong enough basically i think is the simple way to say it but car strength in theory so it depends where you are overproof is what 57 uh percent uh or uh, nabble uh, strength is 54 and a half but like overproof 57 57.15 should we say 100 old english proof but like car strength is invariably at 65 so it's overproof it's over, you know, it's over overproof but depends where you are. I mean, like in Madeira, invariably rum is cast at 50% ABV. So cast strength varies. It's literally, it's the ABV that you put it into the cask. But if you're in some Vincent distillers, because 99% of what they, they make there goes out as sunset strong rum, you know, they're, they're very good at reducing it from column strength at what, 94 or 5, whatever it is they distilled to, reducing it to what, 84 and a half, I think, uh, sunset strong is. And so they actually just cask at 84 and a half because they don't bother further reducing it. They're just sticking it in a barrel at high proof. So car strength is variable, depends where you are and depends on depends on what you're trying to get out of it. If you've got lots and lots of room, you can have it at slightly lower proof, which means the interaction with the wood maybe isn't quite as aggressive um, as it would be at high, high proof. But the higher the proof it goes in, the fewer barrels you need to store said amount of rum. So it's kind of like it, there's a trade-off. And barrels are expensive. And cost of story them are very expensive. So, you know, it, it, things are all a balance. But invariably, I'd say all around, all the travels I've been on, 65 is a fairly common ABV to, to cask at, I would say, um, from, from places I've visited. But but overproof, overproof is a term. It doesn't, for me, it doesn't really mean anything. It's kind of like, you know, it, uh, it's an important fact. If someone says, here's a glass of overproof, at least it's telling you that it's um, <laughs> it's going to be strong when it arrives. So at least you're kind of forewarned. But <laughs> it's kind of, it doesn't really mean anything in, in the modern era as such. But if someone says car strength, well, that's that's a little bit more special. Because car strength is telling you that it's not been reduced. It's not had a big reduction in ABV. So you're going to get a rum that is going to be as, as characterful as, as it's going to be. Because that's just, it's literally come from the barrel. And it, you know, at full strength. So I think that's a really good um, uh, that's a really good marker for it. it looks like um, <laughs> looks like Gail's getting a, a photo shoot set up. <laughs> I'm still here, listening. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. You can always if you if you need to carry on with it, it's fine. You can always switch the camera off. Like, but equally, it's interesting to watch you work. So <laughs> I like work. 
I love work. I could watch it all day long. Um, so let's move on. Uh, we are chatting away. It's nearly one hour in. So um, we're going to jump um, from the Dawley's range. The Dawley's range are like a kind of a, a core commercial range. They're always available lines. Um, so if there's one of these that really takes your fancy, then you're going to be pretty safe to say that they're, they're always going to be available. You don't have to kind of stop pilot. Uh, unless you're trying to Brexit proof or whatever it might be, um, <laughs> which is not necessarily a bad idea. I'm having a few cases just, you know, to, to ride out the COVID and Brexit is probably a good idea. Um, but they're always going to be available. Um, Martin Dawley will come back and maybe chat a little bit more about him afterwards. Um, RL Seals is the only one really in the line that actually makes reference to the name of the company. So the RL Seal company that was formed back in what, 1926. Um, he said squinting at the, the little date underneath the logo in the top corner there, um, is yeah, it's the only one there. Um, and so it's nice to sort of segue between this and uh, when we get to the exceptional cast, just to remind ourselves on this. So this one um, is in the, the quirkiest uh, bottle. I, invariably, when I do tastings at bartenders and people like that, they, uh, people go, oh, I didn't realize you guys made that. And you're like, well, yeah, <laughs> we kind of do. Um, and so, you know, it, it, but it does stand out. It doesn't look like any of the other ones in the line. Um, it is the most pirate, and I can say that quite safely because Richard Seal said that himself. It's the most, the most pirate, pirate in the entire. <laughs> the most pirate one. We have a, a world of rum does have maybe a little bit too much pirate to be. Uh, for, yeah, yeah no. I say that just in case our man's on uh, has joined us this evening. But, um, but uh, it is a real quirky shape, and it's kind of like I don't put gifting possibilities with these. Um, uh, with these bottlings, but if you haven't got a lot of space, or you are looking for a for a present for a for a, a family member that really loves rum or whatever, then this really does kind of stand out. You know, it, it's it, that big crazy one, it's meant to look like an old leather bottle. That's the the shape I've had uh, while I've been out on uh, trainings. I've had people tell me all kinds of reasons why the bottles are shaped it the way it is. <laughs> And, you know, is it because, like, the, the guy who's making the bottle squeezed it too hard when it, the glass was hot and stuff like that? It's like, not as far as I know. I think um, Richard's father just liked the shape of the bottle. Um, it's supposed to be like an old pirate brigand. Exactly. I mean, and it still has on the on the, on the, lo on the, on the label. I mean, it's, uh, well, after all this time, you'd have thought I'd be good at lining up with a camera, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Perfect. Look at that. See? Uh, the Peter, again. is there anything else you specifically would like me to do before I sign off? Oh, cool. Well, how about if you wouldn't mind then maybe just giving us a little bit of a background on the on the, the history of the family with it? I mean, you you married in, you've you've taken on that responsibility. What's it like <laughs> being married into a rum making family? Is it kind of like is it terrible? <laughs> it does not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually quite interesting. I mean, when I met Richard, Richard was studying to be an accountant. And I was teaching Montessori. So it wasn't like I married into being a rum family. I mean, I knew rum was part of their business, um, which a big, a big part of their business. But it's, since Richard and I got married and took over, it's a huge part of, of our world now. Because in it was 1994 that Richard decided to build the distillery himself instead of being independent bottlers, becoming actual distillers and lenders. And... And as, as you can see by the products, Richard loves what he does, <laughs> puts his heart and soul into it. Um, but yeah, being, being in a rum family, it's pretty cool. It, it really is. I mean, we get afforded to meet some of the most wonderful people around the world, and we get to travel to some of the most amazing places. Like, we've been pretty much around the world. We haven't been to Africa yet, and we haven't been to South America for rum. I've been touristing, but not uh, for photography, but not for rum. Um, but we, we are in plans to pretty much get everywhere once once the world is safe to travel again. Nobody's going anywhere anytime soon, though. Um, I'm trying to think what else makes it interesting. I mean, it's like, yeah, there, there's a weight of um, history that kind of comes with it. I mean, like the four generations, it's only just relatively recent that you started making your own. There's a yes, long history I mean, before that. Yeah, well, does I that, mean. Is that way heavy so a little bit? It started with Richard's great grandfather, Reginald Leon Seal, and we started as a little tiny independent bottler on Roebuck Street in Bridgetown, which is where all the independent bottlers were in and around Roebuck Street. And he started off little tiny one room building, buying rum from the West Indies rum refinery, and then everybody would put their own labels on it and do their own little tweaking. So that's where our family um, history of rum started. And then Richard's grandfather took over Reginald Clarence and it just, it kept going. And then when Richard's dad took over, 
they started buying up some of the other families. Um, what was happening is, um, mm -hmm. you know, like Martin Dorley, Aline Arthur, ESA Field, John D. Taylor, and we would keep their best products. So with John D. Taylor, we kept the Falernum, Dorley's, Martin Dorley's, we kept the uh, Dorley's Five, we kept our own RL Seal, we kept the Aline Arthur, and it was a way of preserving the history of Barbados rum as well, because a lot of people, they'd buy a company and shut it down, but we kept a little bit of, of each one of them. So it's quite nice to be part of a real historical rum family. Like it's not just RL Seal. We encompass a lot of the families that were the original rum families back in 1926 when um, the law, it came into law that um, there'd be, there, you could be independent bottlers. You weren't just, um, every, well, everything was put into, into law and everybody became independent bottlers. They're buying from West Indies, from refinery. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of neat. I mean, the history that has gone through Richard's great grandfather to his grandfather, to Richard's father, and, and now with Richard himself and even Christian, I mean, Chris, I don't know if everybody knows our son Christian, but he, um, we pushed him as far away from the rum world as humanly possible. We sent him off and he did politics and um, history at university, which were two of his favorite things. Cause we said, you know, with university, you don't necessarily go in for the job you want, unless you're doing medicine or engineering, but do something you love. So we sent him to do that. And somehow round about the way the world works, he is now working with Velier. He's been there um, five and a half years um, in Genoa and Italy. So he's still part of the family family business in, in a way, even though they don't have like the Dorleys or Provitas or uh, that. But um, we do the special Velier bottlings that he he doesn't, I don't think, have them in his own portfolio. But uh, he's, he still works part time for us on a weekend. So, I mean, the history is continuing on. From, from Richard to Christian. Um, not that Richard's stepping down anytime soon, but uh, Christian, Christian is earmarked to follow on. Fantastic. It is, um, uh, so you guys, I mean, you, you're not seen as a very large distillery. I mean, like you do, I mean, you don't think of yourself as like, we, we, I look at it and think, what, 45,000 barrels? That's loads. What are you on about? It's like massive. But, you know, but in, in the scheme of things, there are much bigger kind of organizations, but this is a family business. Yes, it's, oh, no, it, it definitely is a, it is a family business. And I mean, it's one of those things that we, you know, Richard is our master distiller and blender. Um, I'm our global ambassador. Christian's a part-time ambassador in Europe. You're our part-time in the UK. We are a very small grassroots kind of family. I mean, like we literally, as you said, we no website. We do everything, Instagram, Facebook, social media, Twitter. And we try and do everything ourselves to keep us closer to the, the people that, that we're making rum for. Because, I mean, our whole ethos is everybody should be able to afford to drink good rum. I mean, that's what Forest Square is. We're not out here to make billions of dollars and triple our prices every year and things like that. We're here to make good rum. And, I mean, that's what Richard will always tell you is I make rum. I, you know, he, he doesn't do anything else. He's not fancy, fancy. He just makes rum and he loves making rum. And we love the rum that he makes, so that's great. <laughs> I'm so glad. Anyway, I am going to have to run. I am working with Shane. It's Peter. Oh, oh mate. <laughs> this is also, if um, if so, this guy's a legend, wonderful oh, exactly. guy, uh, wonderful guy all around. We have to, so I, what I have to do is find a way of, um, I'll share your, a link to your Instagram page before um, before this night's out. So the, anyone following uh, needs to follow this guy. Like, he's he's a, he's a ledge. So. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I do miss, honestly. I kind of um, miss rum family. Uh, I can't get out there. I really can't. Right, do it. Go, <laughs> go and be busy. Do some lovely stuff for us. Some nice images right. that we can share on the social media. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me on for a little bit. I really appreciate it. And Peter, thank you for everything you do. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the tasting. Cool. Thank, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. Oh man, I am jealous. I wish I was out there. <laughs> I do wish I was out there. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get the um. We'll, we'll, I'll get the link. Matthew, um, you're asking his name. I'll get the link uh, to his Instagram account because it doesn't necessarily correlate. Um, give us a mo. Um, I'll come back to that. Otherwise, I'm going to get completely distracted. It's nice to get the um. Uh, it is nice to kind of get a little sense of perspective. Um, it's very easy to get lost in um like kind of brand talk. And I think this is this is an important thing. I, I mean, I kind of did expect, like when I first started working, I go like, so have you got a brand manual that I can immerse myself in and learn the facts? Mm -hmm. I was like, no. 
<laughs> and so I kind of like I thought, you know what? I need to kind of I might not work from forever. I'm like, yeah, I might have to move on to what I do. I'll just kind of gather all my thoughts together in a doc and kind of you know we'll, we'll kind of get it all together. It's kind of interesting to see the history that goes with them, um, and also the change in philosophy. But um, so I keep mentioning the YouTube page. If you have time. <laughs> Sometimes we have a lot of time, but there are some interesting uh, in interviews that I've recorded with Richard before. And he does kind of really delve into his family history. He's sort of very disarming about it. He goes like, oh, we just kind of thought it'd be a good idea kind of approach at times. So he's quite disarming. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out, I mean, like, well, I'm, I'm not here to talk about like award winning, but I mean, these guys keep picking up like rum producer of the year awards, like, like left, right and center. So, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're doing something right. Um, right. OK, so RLC, oh, don't close that. Exit, almost closed it. Oh, at the stream. At the stream. There we go. Cool. Me and tech. It's almost professional. So RL Seals 10, <laughs> hopefully you've enjoyed that. So um, what, just to say, so after the Dual is 14, the RL Seals 10 might be a bit light on your palate, but that's okay. Um, this one is, I would say, is um, classically Barbadian, and it's kind of got a, a really easy going vibe to it. Nice kind of toast, kind of toasted coconut edge to it. I'd say this is kind of, if you wanted to understand what Bay Barbados rum tasted like, this is kind of a, a really good place to start. In fact, it's at 46% as well, so just kind of drives the, um, the the flavor just a little bit more onto it. But a 10-year-old, all ex-bourbon, uh, and in the quirkiest bottle you'll ever see. Um, mm -hmm. Now that Gail's not on the line, I can also now be a bit more honest. So uh, there was a time when I'd have been drinking Dawley's XO exclusively, and, of course, I had to move up. I don't get out of bed for anything less than 46% these days, if I'm, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> and I have to say, a little splash of this in the coffee in the morning is just kind of gets you going beautifully. Um, if you enjoy that first coffee a bit too much and then go for a second one, then it can tend to wipe out your day. But um, but if you can afford it, yeah, why not? Um, it's delish. It is absolutely lovely. Um, and so I, I kind of I, I want to reinforce what I said on the, the Gargano classification. I have been drinking rum for a long time. My tastes run a little bit more to the extreme. I like full-flavoured, high-proof and, and ideally, I don't know fuss about whether it be an age, it comes straight off the still as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't expect everyone to be on the same position in their rum tasting journey. You might be starting out. One thing that lockdown has certainly proved is lots more people are getting into rum right now, or maybe they're trading up from spiced or some other kind of category and they want to explore. So if you're going like, wow, this RL Seals 10 is ticking all the boxes, but everyone else has been a bit dismissive because they're, they're waxing lyrical against the car strength. Don't worry about it. Everyone's on a different part of their rum tasting journey. And, uh, and it could be, this is just absolutely for you. The whole point of the range is that there is a rum for everyone. That somewhere in the range will be a rum for you, um, and it, there's no guarantee that you're going to love all of them. So let's move on. We've been yakking away for an hour. That's all right, though, isn't it? It's okay. It's Wednesday, isn't it? Still, yeah. <laughs> Just about. You know, it's like oh. go for small glasses because um, it makes me <laughs> think that I'm drinking. I don't know. It's, it's you feel like a giant. Glass <laughs> twice instead of what, you know, once. So we're going to move to the Tom. So. Um, under normal circumstances, I would say that um, when we get to the exceptional cast selections, um, normally I say, oh, look it up, go out there, get, get, you can buy it. Um, but there's been such an uptake in um, four square rums these days that actually you'll be hard pressed to buy a bottle of Deton these days. So yeah. you, in some respects, you're starting to drink unicorn juice. Um, it's uh, so many of the, the exceptional cast releases, well, I'll explain what that means in a moment, um, are just so highly anticipated now that they sell out very, very quickly. So in the the few years I've been working with the brand, like the Zinfandel cask in 2004, there was lots of it, and it lasted for a year or so, you know, before it eventually ran out. With every, I think, lockdown uh, and the release of Nobillary, which was the, the one that was the first one that came out during lockdown, that sort of, like, gave people a little bit of time. To, uh, they, they still had some money at that point. <laughs> I don't know how your budgets are feeling. I'm, I'm definitely feeling a bit stretched these days. But, like, you know, some people had some money and they had time on their hands to kind of explore. And so, like, uh, Nobillary just went <laughs> sold out just like that, you know, really quick. And uh, and now, like, Detente didn't last very long at all. The importers at one point would have had cases of their rum sitting in the, in bonded warehouse for a long time. They pre-sold everything. It, it just sold straight away. You had, the retailers have to get onto allocation these days. So it doesn't get faster and faster with every release, doesn't it? Definitely. Yeah, and, it, that's it. and I think it's because there's a combo. It's a, a perfect storm of um, Foursquare's sort of recognition mm. becoming more more globally renowned. They're also they're developing longer. Yeah, they have. They've only been as as, uh, as Gail alluded. They've they've only been distilling since like sort of like the the mid nineties. It takes time to lay down stock. And so the oldest barrels they got in stock was from 2004, which is not 
in the scheme of things, not that long ago, you know, but yeah, they're building up to this older rum and, you know, it takes time to build up and build up an age stock that you can draw on to make ever increasingly complex um, uh, rum. So um, for those, I don't know, like you must have tried port cask, didn't you, Ash? The original yeah. port cask release. Yeah, that was one of the ones that I had. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but for me, the port cask release was like, wow. You know, it's like, what, what was this when I first tried it? It was like, oh, my God, what is this, you know? Yeah, exactly. I yeah, mean, it's the like ones were just a whole, yeah, a whole new world of rum. Yeah, they kind of. I'm sorry, I'm I'm chatting away here. Like, I'm not giving you a chance to kind of get involved. Uh, no, that's all right. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> no, I kind of. Um, I've got uh, I've got various bits of memorabilia from when um before I so before I started working with them when I was blogging and like there's one of the ones where um a uh, uh there's a, a little sales sheet that Marussia had put together and it had in there, it had like RO Seals 10 and Port Cask was listed there. It's like the second exceptional cast release. And you're like, this is when it was just readily available. If I knew what I knew now, back then, I'd have bought yeah. 12 cases of it and <laughs> stuck it away in Fort Knox like to, to, because now they're worth a fortune. <laughs> yeah. I was exactly the same with Triptych. We had a bottle of Triptych, I think, before we really was full on with the whole four square journey and yeah didn't really know what we had and probably didn't appreciate it quite as much as i would have liked to um <laughs> yeah obviously now i look back and think damn <laughs> wish we kept some of that so every, yeah every so, bottle of that is like, worth two or three times what you paid for it you know yeah, and that's exactly. now and uh yeah so um th there may or may not be people here that hang around i mean i don't look at the rum um auction sites because quite frankly i haven't got the money <laughs> I, I don't want to confuse <laughs> myself by looking at what might be and what I can't afford. But bottles of the, the older bottles, the things like port cask, are going for a, for a decent price. And um, it's surprising. Uh, and I think this it's actually that action that surprises Richard as much because he doesn't realize quite how much the, the brand's moved on and to the, the speed that it has done. Yeah. So, to John, so I'm happy to share it with you. Um, good thing about lockdown was that I got my sampling stock in, um, but I haven't been out on the road. And so, therefore, the, the stock was here to share with you guys tonight. So, um, if you like it, um, I'm not saying it's impossible to get hold of, but it's increasingly very difficult to get hold of. Uh, it might be worth giving Constantine a shout. To be fair, they, they may maybe they got it, maybe they haven't. Um, they have to the, uh, quite quite late. They had that for quite a long time, so perhaps. Yeah, yeah. what's it? So some of these ones kind of came out and they held on, but now this last anything that's got to come out in the last 12 months or so, there's a lot of pressure on um, buying it. So um, when Marussia Beverages, who are the the importers of it, previously a lot of the, the big online have taken the vast majority of the imported stock, you know, like the, the, the previous releases. Um, and that's that's great because it's, you know, it, it gets it into the hands of people. But the Deton particularly was um, a rum that Marussia wanted to make sure that all the independent retailers had the option for buying a case or two of so that they could get it out there. So we have we could almost go back to the magic of what it was like in the old days of going in and saying, oh, you've got some Dawley's XO. Okay, I'll have you know, I'll have that and trying to sort of get that that love. So it's kind of, so it's not so easy to get hold of immediately. I mean, like for, um, on Whiskey Exchange and Master Malt sold out very, very quickly of this release. Um, but, um, you know, but it is out there. So do check your local spirits, uh, your specialist retailers. There are quite a few, and it's going to be the same for um, for the next one that comes out as well. We'll, we'll talk about that. But what does um, what does the exceptional cask series uh, selection um, mean? So these are the ones where it's kind of like you, you've got the the standard Dawleys range, three five XO twelve fourteen. You've got the RL seals, and these rums are being made like all the time and being you're always being released to market. Nothing changing. Possibly in a few years' time, we might have a Dawley 16 coming to supplement the range, but that'll take a little while. Um, it's nice to have a little something to play with. You know, the, the wineries declare a vintage from time to time. They've got a particular crop that's, like, wonderful. You know, they want to declare a vintage. And so Richard wanted to release something that would sort of stand out a little bit special. So the actually the 1998 vintage was the very first ECS release. They didn't know that it was going to become a series back then and then port cask and then it went to zin and and so forth and it kind of crept through but now uh, the very latest one in the series is redo tar which is the 15th release uh in the uh, in the series um and it's just becoming increasingly uh, increasingly popular so that will be in the uk I'll come back. i will come back to that um but you know they're, they're coming out so to taunt actually for those that have been following the brand for a long time to taunt harks back to the port cask release because it's got the, that, that ex port cask part of the blend. So, uh, and in fact, some of the bar, uh, in say, some of the casks that produced that release um, were then refilled with rum and laid down, and have now gone into this one. So there's that kind of continuation of history. But it's actually a blend. So um, uh, where is it? So it's uh, oh god, 
I remember my part was either three or four years. Oh God, terrible. Jeez, I think so. I'm going I'm to plump with three years. I'm probably completely wrong. Somebody can correct me. There's like three years ex bourbon followed by um, uh, seven years in uh, uh, in port casting. It's probably four and six actually. God, I have to look at my own brand manual now. Oops. Now, <laughs> cheat, you know, <laughs> that's why we have a brand manual. <laughs> this, is the, uh, this is the first um, first four square um, rum club of the year. Well, that's my excuse. I'm going to stick to it. I don't well, know, I'll find I can find excuses, but it's also um, so it's not just that it's a blend of ex bourbons, a ten year old ex bourbon. It's also it's old port cast, but also first field port cast. So it's actually quite a complex blend of all sorts of things going on, but minimum ten years old. Um, and for me, this one I don't mind talking about sort of tasting notes on this one, but I find this one really jammy, and like mm. that that port cask influence is just so so good. Yeah. I have um, of the two are. Oh, oh, are the two of you? What, are you drinking? Of course we are, mate. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are we drinking? I want to. I'm going to do this sober. Crazy. This is my my privilege. <laughs> to, to, to... <laughs> oh, yeah, I did say at the beginning that I'd li I'd lined up all of my tastings um, in the predicted order. And Keith earlier did say, "How am I getting on?" And <laughs> I did get them bang on the money, but I'd like to, I have attended quite a few of Pete's rum club, so I feel like I've cheated somewhat. But yeah, I got them right. Thanks for asking, Keith. <laughs> I think the um, uh, for anyone who's done our rum clubs at the Brig, normally six would be like, well, that's just the outward six, isn't it? Normally we kind of do like twelve, and it's like it does get a little bit more leery. Um, I think for the uh, I think six is probably quite a lot actually on a on a school night. Saturday yeah. doesn't matter quite so much, does it? But uh, on a school night, it's a little bit different. Um, so yeah, so I think so. This one, fifty-one percent. So I don't think anyone noticed we've jumped up a, a bit higher still uh, on the ABV. But I don't think anyone is drinking this, going like, "Wow, fifty-one percent. That's really hot in my mouth." What we've got here is we've got something else coming into play. That when you do these limited editions, you don't need them to be consistent batch to batch because there is only one batch. So the Dawley's range will have a little bit of caramel to make sure that one bottling looks exactly the same as another. All barrels give up color differently. Color extraction is not flavor. It's part of the maturation thing. So it's um, Dawleys have to be consistent. The vintages don't. So there's no need to chill filter them or to, to add any kind of colorant or them or any of these things. They are just literally rum. The only thing in the case that's been added to this is a bit of water to bring it down to that 51. But true story, Richard Seal was going to release it 48 because he wanted the red label um, ECS releases. You'll see on the on the front, the, the word detente is in red. Um, any of the uh, ECS that are really, uh, have red labels on tend to be at a lower ABV to be a bit more accessible for people. Not everyone was born into this world drinking car strength straight off the bat um as much as we you know as we as we do now but like not everyone's in that same position so previously sagacity um sim van del cask all of these were that sort of slightly lower abv he was going to do it at 48 but he just kind of like he was trying at different abvs and he just really liked it at higher proof and he was fretting generally fretting that 51 might scare some folks off that, that, that yeah. might they might be a bit worried about 51 percent i like Dude, seriously, I think you've got a much more, um, you've got an audience that kind of uh, expects it to be a bit higher. So the next one might drop back down to 48. But, you know, if you see the red label, you can expect it to be a, a lower ABV to be a bit more acceptable, uh, sorry, accessible for people maybe new to rum. Fucking delicious, isn't it? It really is. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. It is. I love so. that podcast finish. I really do. I really enjoy that. Mm. I did finish that one. Right. What do we get to? I'll pour another one. <laughs> yeah, just right. keep drinking that one for a bit. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm all right. I've got um, you guys have got 30 ml. I've got a whole sample stock bottle here to to kind of get stuck into. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> benefits of uh, benefits of the brand ambassador, I guess. Um, so our last one um, is 2008, and again, I'm not quite sure whether you can actually get this one so easily in in store. The vintages mm -hmm. are um, uh, a bigger outrun. The um, yeah. the, the taunt was a smaller one. Smaller outrun. There's only like six six thousand, I think, of bottles for in seventy cl size. The the vintages are a little uh, a larger outrun. Bring that down. Two thousand and eight. Yeah, that went really quick, as far as I know. Yeah. So vintages. So why? So two thousand eight. So it is literally. Um, so this you could think of this one as kind of like a grown up version of the RLC was ten, in terms of full strength. Um, and it was kind of like about the the, the, the name literally is the, the year that it was distilled. So it sort of follows on. So the first one that kind of hit the market, the first ECS that hit the market was the 2004, the, the first vintage one. Um, 
Foursquare 2006, which was a Velier release, had already kind of been released, and that 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 release kind of changed the game for Foursquare in a massive way. The, tying in with Velier, uh, Luca Gagano at Velier is very much a thought leader, I'm saying, very charismatic, and and really is someone that you need to follow. So after you finish with this, go back to Facebook and go to the Whiskey Exchange, and then rewatch the the Hamden Estate tasting that was just done this evening with um, Dawn Davis, because that will be very very insightful. I'm I'm sure. Um, so that first release with Luca kind of allowed Foursquare's rums to get to a bigger audience um, more than they, than they already were. Um, and it did really well. And it is absolutely delicious. The 2006 is, is banging. If you can get a bottle of that, do. But it is very expensive at auction these days. Um, the vintage, so he released one under ECS. These ones are deliberately downplayed in terms of their kind of the, the way they're presented. Yeah, plain white label. You know, it's the same bottle as the Dawley's range. Um, when it comes to limited editions for lots of brands, they tend to put it in a fancier bottle or put it in a fancy case or something like that. I mean, even Dawley's 14 comes in a very flash um, uh, case these days in comparison. Mm. These don't even come in a box. They're just literally as they are. His thinking is that if you're going to want to experiment or want to try something that's kind of limited edition, don't make price be the bar to entry on this. Um, when this was released, like 60 quid, like a pound a percent is... I, I find a very good ratio um, yeah. you know, uh, for for any, anything in life. But when you're not paying for a box or anything extra, then you, you're you you're just literally you're, you're paying for the rum. Um, and so it's like the whole thing is about downplaying it because the focus is meant to be the liquid in the bottle, and, and this is what you want. So Appleton Joy, for example, is beautiful. I mean, the the Joy release is just stunning. Mm comes in a beautiful decanter and a very you know, nice case and everything else. And you know, it's wonderful. It's a delicious drop of rum. But at the, at the price, it's like, well, I can't afford to go and buy two or three of those. Whereas, actually, you could buy a case of this and not feel too bad about it. you know. And, and that's, what the, that's what he's found in the market is that people kind of got into it. and They, get, they don't just – I've seen friends in, in America. I've seen them picking it up, picking up Redo Tab from their local liquor store, not just buying a bottle, buying a six-bottle case because they just know that it's gonna, they're going to drink the heck out of it and the price is um, appropriate. So um, – that's kind of why it's kind of downplayed the way it is. Um, and part of that, and I put the little IWC trophy on there. So it was the trophy winner who was the, the, declared the very best rum at the, the last year's International Wines and Spirit tr um, competition. Um, out of all the rums entered, this was the one that sort of won the trophy. Um, and Foursquare, so they keep picking up all kinds of awards left, right, and center. But 2008 is so, so different from the 2004 that changed the game. I mean, I don't know what you thought. Like when I, I probably bought, I don't, you tried it before I bought it in for a rum club, but like yeah. a car strength, like what, you know, 11 year old rum at an affordable price. I mean, this is mental. Know. Like, you know. Of that quality, yeah, it's insane. It, it's difficult to, uh, you know, kind of, it's, you have to kind of look back at all the things that have happened to realize the impact they had at the time. But whether we realized at the time just how impactful it was, I don't know. No. No, I definitely took it for granted a bit, I think, back then. <laughs> it was um, a, it, not as complex a spirit as this one is. This one allows, yeah. because of the extra time that, that we've got maturation going on, there's more cast to draw on. Richard's able to make a more complex spirit. Mm -hmm. and he's also That's playing true. around. But this doesn't taste anything like, I mean, well, the, only, the only difference between this in, in spec is the fact that it's uh, a year older and 1% higher than the 2004, yeah. but it's very different in the way it tastes. They're very yeah, different. Absolutely. Yeah, as we said, every single release from Foursquare, even though on paper you might be convinced that they're going to taste very similar, they're all such their own characters. They really are. 2005. You remember when 2005 came out, just how damn yeah. it was? Like, people are like, oh, my God, how good is this? And you're like, geez, this is the best thing I've ever tried. And the next vintage comes out, and you're like, oh, my God, this is the best thing I've ever tried. And then they... <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah I have, I have this problem where i kind of like i don't want to keep sounding like i'm just waxing lyrical about every damn <laughs> new release but they just they do seem to get better and better yeah they are actually that good <laughs> oh generally so if you've not tried this one so it'd be interesting to kind of get a sense for um from anyone out there going like is i mean again 60 percent abv but because of the weight of the rum because there's a nice whack of pot still like heavy weighted rum in there and the fact that there's no chill filtering so there's so there's a nice sort of oiliness in the on the palate mm -hmm. um you know you're not getting rid of those sort of fatty acids that kind of are part of fermentation but um if to be i don't know whether um if you have got a bottle of deton i didn't do this before i'm doing this on the fly somewhat this the the deton uh, in terms of flocculation which is the um technical name for um those fatty acids coming out of solution deton is an absolute nightmare for it if you pick up a bottle of Deton, you haven't seen it. When my, I got my my uh, my 
stock arrived for the first time, it looked like the, the bottle had a thundercloud in it. There was so much, um, uh, it's so much clouding up, so much hazing. If you get it and you just give it a shake, the, the, you know, the, that, that sort of those fatty acids go back into solution. But it just kind of it's 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 flavour in solution. That's what it is. In the case of the higher, higher proof stuff, then those acids don't come back out of solution; they stay stay in solution. So you don't get it so much there. But um, but it has some mouthfeel. It just kind of oh, it does. Yeah, that's a great mouthfeel. Just makes it more oily and on on the palate. So if anyone's thinking this is too high for them, that's absolutely fine. It is you know if it is a little bit too full on for your palate. Yeah, I get it. It's okay. Um, feel free to add a, a tiny bit of water to it if you feel like you would like to. This has had a little bit of water added to it anyway. Um, during maturation, rums will lose a few degrees of um, ABV um, just as part of the maturation process. But when all the barrels are, are vatted together, they will add a little bit of water, a degree or so of water added to it. Just to drop it down just a touch. Don't drop it down lots. If you're going to drop it down lots, that's exactly the tip it back. That's exactly the... Tip that glass right back, Ash. That's oh, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> if you want to this down a lot, then uh, just stick with the RL seals ten. But like, but yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting every last drop out of that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so they were the ones. So hopefully you enjoyed those six. Um, if one of them well, didn't stand out as much for you, that's fine. That's entirely up to you. Um, just to give you a little idea of what's coming. Um, I really did, honestly, I really did hope that um, it was going to arrive in time that I could sneak these into the set, which is why we're a little bit coy about what was going to go into the tasting set. But um, Redo Tarb, of which I think I did put a little taster in for you. I didn't have enough to share with the whole group, but Ash, you have <laughs> got a taster there somewhere in much of your sets. Yeah. Um, this one is the next one that's going to come out. Um, I'm bring that onto the, I haven't put it onto the screen yet. I'm glad that you've pronounced it as well because um... yeah, I kind of like when I do my sheets, I tend to put <laughs> um, uh, the tasting or how how you pronounce it, the phonetical of it, you know. And oh, I always, um, I always get Richard to say it first, so I know how it sounds. Um, <laughs> I do. Uh, <laughs> Redo tab, Redo tab is kind of how we got um, Derek Morrison. Detant Gray, not ready for 2008. That's absolutely fine. Put a splash of water with you 2008, and then give it uh, another go. Um, everyone's on a, uh, everyone's kind of. It depends on the time of day as well. To be fair, sometimes car strength's a little bit. Rough for me at eight thirty in the morning as well. Um, sometimes, <laughs> Redo uh for me is uh, is a bit of a stun. I would say we we're hoping to have it here before Christmas, but then didn't quite work out. And then, unfortunately, um, Brexit has affected the borders. So currently, the stock is sitting in Rotterdam in a bonded warehouse. And the problem we have is trying to get a the freight forwarders to get a truck that can pick it up and bring it across the border. Now, the borders are not straightforward at the moment. Um, but once it comes over, then all the stock is. I think bar a few cases is pre-allocated for uh, for retailers. And again, like Deton, it's going to be sort of spread. A whole bunch of retailers will be out there. Expect to pay about £73. That's the suggested RRP for it. Um, just to put that into context, this is a 14-year-old at 61% ABV. So you are getting quite a lot of rum for your money. And it is a ex-Bourbon, ex-Madeira cast blend. Remember that diagram? I drew it at the beginning. It's not going to taste like Dualist 12. It's not going to taste like Dualist 14. It doesn't. It actually tastes stunning. Um, I say that so familiar. It's kind of, um, for me, it's kind of like, if I wanted to describe it, this has a, it's like the 2008, but with a very n delicate hint of Madeira about it. it. Adds a little bit of delicate fruit to it. So it's closer in profile to the 2008 than it is to the 14. That's for absolute sure. Um, but it is coming soon. We just... Can't give you an exact date on that one, but if any of these ones have really ticked your fancy, I would keep an eye out for when that arrives. And if you can, buy two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I second. think I've learned that lesson now. <laughs> Always yeah, do. Buy them early, you won't get a second chance. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, have, have ask, offered uh, a boat in the comments. Someone's offered to um, bring their get some rum <laughs> and bring it over. If only it was that straightforward. I mean, <laughs> it, it might get to the point where we send like a large helicopter over and uh, bring it back that way. You know. <laughs> I've got we have people on, on Twitter, a friend on Twitter who, who keep like, like literally, I think he, he, he fair play to me, he, he waits every week, but he keeps going, like, Have we got a date yet? Have we got a date yet? Like, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> you know. Sorry, I wish we did. <laughs> <laughs> but if you voted Brexit, it's your fault. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that me? Shall I say that out loud? <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's it. So that'll, that'll be the future. That'll be very soon. I was hoping to get into this one, uh, as a consequence, you got the taunt instead. So yeah, it's not all bad, is it? Um, 
I, actually, it does allow me just to actually point out, if, if you did notice, but I said about the color of the labels, the ones that are the green label, which is just about, you can just about make it on there. Um, uh, but was it blue? Blue, green uh, on that. But it's um, they're the ones that are kind of like cast strength, but a cast blend. So they are a little different. So when you look out, no, um, no Billery is the only one that was uh, had a purple just because Richard liked to do something different. Cool. <laughs> We've just about here, or just about coming up for an hour and a half. It yeah. Feels like, feels like we did it. Sorry, Seth. Sure. Thank you. How was your first, Ash? How was that for you? Oh, that was good. I, I don't really like looking at my own face. That's quite unnerving. <laughs> this is like constantly in the corner. But um, yeah, no, that was fabulous. Thank you so, so much, Pete. Um, very really welcome. Um, Have we got any questions? I think um, I think we probably either I spoke so much and I covered everything we need to know, <laughs> or something. So what I was going to say. So yes, I need to give. Let me share a link in the thing for the YouTube. Give me two seconds. I shall. Yeah. Our YouTube channel because I'm. I don't mind sharing that. I've. I've kind of. I'm not saying that it's a classically designed, well marketed YouTube channel because it certainly isn't. Um, it's something that I threw together. My videos. So we, we did just have a quick comment from Amy as well, actually, above that said, How often are we going to be doing these rum clubs? Um, so obviously, now that we've kind of run the first one and seen that, obviously, you guys are really keen on it. Um, hopefully, touch wood, we'll be able to get something sorted kind of every month again. So, um, yeah, obviously, we'll get that all over social media when we do. Um, Please. but yeah, so thanks, guys. Hopefully, you can join us another, another month. Nice. But, um, yeah, Pete, thank you so, so much. That was our first. First digital rum club, first virtual rum club. Loved it. <laughs> we can do and we can do these things if we do one. I mean, I'm just saying we should really come and do them on a Saturday, really, shouldn't we? But um or something yeah. like that. So we can take we'll a bit more time. Fun. But um, but it was fun. So if you have got questions, I'm just gonna share some things. I'm gonna share some more stuff. I'm gonna share I've got all, look, look at me with a tip. Look at watch look, look, look. Oh, look at that. Look at me <laughs> doing <stuff>. Very oh. <laughs> Oh. oh, look at me! Look at me, so technical. Like, you know, I am, I am genuinely impressed. <laughs> if you've got questions, feel free to um, drop us a line on any of those those channels. If you do contact me via social media, then you probably won't get a response for a long time because I have lots of social media <laughs> channels. I tend to ignore a lot of them, uh, or I kind of miss questions. But I will get back to you eventually. Um, so uh, please do drop us a line. Otherwise, thank you very much for making this evening fab. Thank you very much, Ash, for allowing us to be your first. <laughs> <laughs> no, worries. thank you so much for, for joining us. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Cool. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Ciao, Bella. Uh, and Ash, you don't need to log off straight away, but I will be ending the broadcast right now. Cheers. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys.